to start. Riesling, we talked about that just a little bit. Bambul is also certified organic. They are located in the middle of that very sunny region, the Gulf that we just talked about. They're the village of um, Diasheim, very picturesque. Uncle Hoyer is one of their most prestigious GG sites. Although when we're in this area of the faults, you'll notice that there are fewer steep slopes, right? And where there are fewer steep slopes and we have a lot of sunshine and a lot of warmth, their wines tend to be like a little richer and a little fuller and a little bigger. Oh, very historic estate, began in 1980 or 1849, 1989, whatever. Uh, 1849, uh, primarily focused on Riesling, but they do a little bit of Pinot, and they do um, they do some Chardonnay, they do some Weiss, uh, Weiss Rigger, they do a tiny bit of Choy Reba, which we haven't got yet, but I also feel like how many Choy Rebas can we, can we bring to this new world, right? Let's go to the next one. I put a couple of wines on here because we were tasting this one as a bonus. Oh, and Riesling, or Riesling Zach with Wiener Schnitzel. <sighs> People think, and so whether it's a pork schnitzel or Wiener Schnitzel, right? And Wiener Schnitzel is veal, so red meat, whatever. People think they have to have red wine for that. And it couldn't be further from the truth because Wiener Schnitzel in its purest form, we're gonna squeeze a lemon. And anywhere we squeeze a lemon is where Riesling belongs. They love it with a Zecht. Um, because, you know, we've got that fried chicken bubbles thing kind of going on there, right? So the bubbles cut through the fried and the Riesling complements the lemon that's squeezed on top. So always Wiener Schnitzel. Um, and charcuterie, honestly, it's great with beef tartare. And that one I can speak from personal experience because I love that pairing. Um, yeah, Wiener Schnitzel. Then we'll talk about the, uh, the rosé because this is a by the box feature. I think it's cool. I was worried it was sitting up. <laughs> um, the rosé is a by the glass feature, and we haven't gotten our 23 rosés yet. They are coming middle of next month. And I also know that in a world of seltzer and THC drinks in Minnesota, because Minnesota is kind of the wild west for that right these days, um, rosé sales are down. I wouldn't say even flatline. I'd say definitely down compared to where they were, you know, five or six years ago. We are bringing in less rosé, and we are really sticking to our brands that we feel have the um, best recognition and the, the best profile for consumers, right? And Bakul is one of those. One of, first of all, the branding is great, right? So that bottle has that uh, beautiful label on the front because it's bone dry rosé, much like the bone dry Riesling. Um, they created that branding to intentionally kind of correct the Riesling is always sweet thing. And when they made that Riesling, it was so successful that they also made this Pinot Noir Rosé as well. We're focused on this 22. And if you do have consumers and people in the trade that are like, I can only have the freshest vintage, I would really love for them to try German Rosé that is more than a year old. Because in my opinion, it's better because sometimes when it's brand new, and ours usually show up a little late anyway, but when it's brand new, we have a lot of acid here and they can be a little austere in my opinion. And when we have it year of bottle age, especially on this one, I think it's just shining really bright. It's doing all the things we need rosé to do. It's got that gorgeous color, right? And I, 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 when I think about the wine technically, I don't take into consideration the color, but for consumers that matters. A lot of the time it matters. Because rosé, even with its sales declining, for those that are still really into it, rosé is a lifestyle, right? That color is really, really important. And it's day bright, it's vibrant. The wine itself is coming into its fruit. Yes, we have acid, but we have a little bit more red fruit going on there. Um, for me, it shows up as like a little like grapefruit or orange zest as well, and a little bit of rhubarb. Still mineral driven, good texture, yeah, I just really love this wine. It's different than the Salve, and I always kind of compare the two of those because you guys work with that one as well. But I think good fruit, great rosé profile, and then rosé, 
and I know I've waxed poetic about Riesling having so many applications, but when I was in the restaurant, if there was a dish that I couldn't pair, it was always like, bring out the rosé, right? Bring them out, because chances are rosé can kind of be a bridge where maybe a red's gonna be too heavy and a white's not enough, but I need something that's in the middle and rosé can really do that. So obviously patio thunder, um, but always charcuterie. Ooh, and then as long as we're talking about cuisines, this wine and dry Riesling as well, sushi, sashimi, tuna poke, the rosé specifically with like raw tuna or raw salmon is like lights out. And a lot of things would really overpower the delicateness of those um, those items and, and a rosé will not. So German rosé specifically with sushi, sashimi, so, so good. Okay, great.